I was an unhealthy vegan and I paid for it. Hey, beautiful people, it's Melissa from Choosing My Health, where I teach you how to easily transition to a whole food, plant-based lifestyle and thrive. And I'm so excited because today I'm sharing my before and after vegan diet journey and what led me to transition to a whole food, plant-based lifestyle. I'm sharing some personal things from my life. I've kind of like never shared with my YouTube community, plus some never before seen photos. Uh, from the past, and I hope this encourages you on your journey. So without any further ado, let's go. Before I go into the story, I want you to remember one thing. Every experience you go through has a purpose, even the broken ones, they have a purpose. You might not see it right now, right? But whether it's in the next second or in the next 10 years, that purpose is revealed to you. I've learned that as I've trusted in God, that all things work together for good. And I didn't see it like that then, but now I do. Because from very early on, I had health challenges. As a baby, I had cradle cap, which is a condition where you develop like this thick, crusty patch on your scalp or patches on your scalp. Mine were so bad, they oozed and bled and caused my hair to fall out in patches. And my mom shared that there were even instances when people would actually step away from me because it looked so bad. Not many people wanted to hold me. And my skin condition didn't get better. I developed a severe case of psoriasis. If you know, you know. It caused thick red patches and silvery scales behind my knees, my arms, my ears. I scratched until I bled. I got a lot of stares, a lot of comments. As you can imagine, it made me feel very self-conscious. And I was often told I had chicken skin. On top of this, y'all, I was diagnosed with asthma, which plagued me for a very long time. I regularly woke up in the middle of the night out of breath, running to my nebulizer. If you have asthma, you know what I mean. If you've never experienced it, it kind of feels like trying to breathe with like five men on top of your chest. I'll never forget the first time I had to sit out of recess because I couldn't breathe. And I distinctly remember feeling like a fish out of water because all the other kids were playing, but I couldn't. And during this time, I also experienced childhood trauma which only exacerbated my medical conditions, uh, which caused me to not only struggle physically, but emotionally. While I didn't know it at the time, I was eating a standard American diet. So high amounts of processed food, refined carbs, lots of sugar, refined fats, meat. I was also eating tons of school lunch from kindergarten to high school. If you grew up on inner city, standard American diet, school lunch, you already know. We're talking about burgers on white bread, pizza, Still not sure if it was cheese or plastic, <laughs> hot dogs, greasy grilled cheese sandwiches, milk, not the type of food that heals the body. As a result, I was constipated. I went days without a bowel movement. And when I went, it was difficult. They say the beginning of all disease starts in the colon. And because I wasn't eliminating, I wasn't healing. It wasn't long before I was getting tons of blood work done because I was constantly in pain. And my symptoms were mimicking fibromyalgia and I hadn't even hit 15 years old yet. But as God would have it, he would use the most unexpected divine intervention as the impetus to a healing journey I didn't even know I needed. So it was Thanksgiving and I had to be about 16 years old. Like the typical American household, turkey was on the menu. My sister goes in the kitchen to prepare turkey she proceeds to slice it open, what she sees she could never anticipate. A translucent, engorged, skin-crawling, supersized parasite waiting to be devoured. Listen, at that moment, everything in me went cold turkey and I became a vegetarian overnight. But because not eating meat was more of an emotional decision prompted out of, you know, fear and not conviction, it was only a matter of time until I got that hit of General Giles chicken wafted in the air, a little Mickey D's, and I relapsed. Now, this experience taught me that decisions you make in life have to come from a deep-rooted conviction instead of a short-lived fear, you know? You have to know you want something even when the fear is gone because that type of resolve slays temptation, parasite or not. So I'm a relapsing vegetarian, on and off depending on the aromas in the air, and it wasn't until I sat down as a freshman in my health principles class at Oakwood University, shout out to Oakwood, that I got a real graphic informed look at the dangers of meat and the pain these animals actually go through when slaughtered. Listen, y'all, that was like everything to me. And I was like, nah, I'm a vegan now. 
But I had one problem, and it wasn't me. It was cheese. Yes, cheese, cheese, cheese. Listen, that thing had a hold on me. I was an addict. <laughs> Why? Well, cheese contains casein, a dairy protein that releases casein morphines, a morphine-like compound. So casein morphines can cross the blood-brain barrier and attach the dopamine receptors in your brain. These are the same brain receptors that heroin and other narcotics are attached to. So it was really hard for me to get off of cheese. And by the way, if you need a good cheese recipe, I'll leave a link below. So I eventually adopted a vegan diet, but I had to learn some things the hard way. I fell into the bad habit of binging on lots of processed vegan food. How many of us know that vegan doesn't necessarily mean you're healthy? I had veggie meat like three times a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I could easily eat fake sausages and patties for breakfast with one or two bready white flour biscuits and some salty gravy. For lunch, I had bread with fake ham, not to mention the dessert, and more veggie meat for dinner. Don't forget dessert. I paid for it, y'all. In about three months, I put on a lot of weight. Some people didn't even recognize me. And I developed a horrible case of cystic acne, the type where your pimples bleed and so to cover this up, I would wear my hair to the sides of my face to try to hide it, but it wasn't enough, you know, to heal them. And I went on like this for years. I tried everything, medicated cream, soaps, lotions, oils. I had no clue uh, that my acne was actually connected to my diet. I'm vegan, right? I don't eat meat. I don't eat cheese. I do green smoothies. I work out. Yeah, but I also binged on foods that were causing huge inflammation in my body. And that wasn't everything. I was constipated again, struggling, and I lived like this for years. I graduated from undergrad, I went off to grad school, and everything came to a halt one fall morning when I could hardly get out of bed. At this time, I was planning a wedding, working full time, working on my master's, going to sleep at all sorts of hours. I literally went down to 98 pounds. My body crashed, and that's when it got real. So I made an appointment to see the doctor to get some blood work done, right? And I knew something was off because I just was not feeling right. When my labs came back, my doctor looked me in the eye and he said, Melissa, I've noticed leukemia-like activity in your blood. We need to do some extra tests. At that moment, I knew I had two choices. Pick up the phone call to wake up and do something about my health or succumb to disease. I knew I had to do something before something happened to me. With the doctor's news, I began doing all types of research, reading books, finding studies, uh, watching documentaries to discover the best ways to quickly heal my body. And then I knew for sure that my foods, including my fast paced lifestyle, were triggering my chronic health issues. And I finally reached a point where I was like tired of surviving. I wanted to thrive. My hunt to heal confirmed something that Deep down inside, I knew it was true, but I really didn't want to face because I was too addicted to pleasing my taste buds. That meant I had to let go of my processed foods. Yes, even the ones that said all natural and vegan with the nice green package, but in actuality had some hard to pronounce questionable ingredients that were not healthy at all. So I took the plunge. I ditched the veggie meat. I let go of fried foods. I cut out processed flours and bread. I stopped processed sugar. I began to go all in with raw fruits and vegetables, whole grains, tubers, legumes, nuts, and seeds. And I started to juice like heavy. And I started to heal. My health drastically improved by leaps and bounds. My gut began to heal and I was better able to absorb nutrients from food that su actually support my immune system and they reduce inflammation. And all the fiber stabilized my blood sugar because sometimes that would dip too. And I had better management of my bowels. And my skin also did something I had never seen. It began to clear up. Like, I almost feel like crying because God knows how hard this thing was for me. <laughs> like, I was finally able to talk to people without my face bleeding. Now, instead of people walking up to me, commenting about my skin, I now had people asking me what happened to my skin because it looked so clear. I remember being at church and seeing one of my college mates walk in, who I hadn't seen in years, and he comes up to me and was like, Melissa! Homeboy looks at me and is like, what happened to your face? It was that drastic of a difference, not to mention he was pretty bold to say that. <laughs> now, something I didn't go into detail about is that during one of the lowest parts of my health journey, 
I lost a lot of hair. I went from past uh, shoulder length to not being able to even do a ponytail. Around that time, I was dating a guy, my now husband, and we were just getting to know each other. And I had some braids in my hair that I was taking down. And you know how long that can take, sisters. And he asked me if he could help me. And I was like, yes. And he's taking them down in the back and he says, do you know you have a patch in the back that hardly has any hair? Now, if you know my husband, Jason, you know he's eloquently frank. And so I was so embarrassed, but I really didn't have to because how many of y'all know that if a brother finds a patch in the back of your head and loves you in spite of, he's a keeper. Listen, I found me a keeper, praise the Lord. The good news about the hair is that when my diet changed and I did some very specific things, honey, hair started growing like Rapunzel. My tresses reached waist length. Like I didn't even know this type of growth could even be possible for me. If y'all wanna know what I did to grow healthy hair and get some length, just let me know in the comments. I can do a video about that if y'all are interested. Oh, and my monthly cycle. There were days it felt like death. That's all I gotta say. All of this changed when my diet changed. My energy levels went up. I went from anemic to healthy blood iron levels, so much so that for my first baby, the midwife had to ask me what I did to keep my iron levels up because she was pretty sure that I was gonna be anemic because I was plant-based. And by God's grace, I was able to have a healthy first plant-based pregnancy, a beautiful baby girl, then another plant-based pregnancy to a beautiful baby boy, and last year just gave birth to another beautiful, healthy baby boy. And something people have asked me is, how in the world did you lose all your baby weight so quick? Because for each pregnancy, I put on like 40 to 50 pounds, for real, and I lost the baby weight easily. And honestly, a big part of it is the whole food plant-based lifestyle. I just gotta be honest, right? And if you wanna know how to lose postpartum weight safely and quickly, let me know. I can make a video about that too. If you wanna go plant-based, three things you should do, find a support system. I didn't always have someone rooting for me when I went vegan, right? In fact, there were a lot of haters. And even though I didn't always get it right at the beginning, I knew that this had to be a part of my healing journey. Most importantly, when I met my husband, he did all he could to support me on my journey. Shout out to my man. That's when I saw the power of finding a friend to vibe with on the journey. And that person doesn't necessarily have to have a vegan diet. When we were first dating, he wasn't on a vegan diet and I wasn't trying to force him. That had to be a personal decision for him, right? He did eventually go plant-based, praise the Lord, but he didn't have to be plant-based to support my desire to heal. So if you find yourself a friend, a support group, a family member, someone you can talk to who can encourage you to grow, it's gonna be so helpful regardless of the dietary choice that they may have. And even if you don't find one and you're riding solo like I was for a very long time, God will help you and you can still do this. Which leads me to my second point. I would not have been able to do this if I didn't have Jesus, you know, if I didn't have God showing me how to grow each step of the way. And I prayed many times, y'all, to be set free from agony, from asthma, from my constipation. And I didn't even realize that the answer was staring at me dead in the face every time I drank a green smoothie, every time I went to the grocery store. He opened my eyes and was patient with me and healed me. So if you're praying for a breakthrough, he hears you. And it may be as simple as going all in with plants that heal and trusting him to use this supernaturally to balance and restore your health. And number three, you got to believe that you can do this, right? If you don't believe, who else is going to believe for you, honey? All you got to do is say yes to choosing your health, just like you say yes to putting one foot in front of the other to move forward. And should you want to transition to a whole food plant-based diet, check out what I wish I knew before going plant-based. And please subscribe if you want encouragement, recipes, and plant-based education. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next one.